Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the Corner Talks podcast. Today, I have a bunch of talented filmmakers, artists, creatives, Alana, Espanier, and Iman coming on the podcast to talk about their latest film, Fire Escape. How's it going? How's everyone doing? Hi. Good. Doing well? Yeah, really good. Great. Yeah, so you guys all, we all mutually know Eric Tomjay. We have to give him a shout out, the film producer on the project. And he was nice enough to get us all together uh, to talk about Fire Escape. Uh, he's been on my podcast uh, quite frequently. And one of the films he discusses a lot is this film, Fire Escape. And I've always wanted to know the other talented people that have come on the pod, uh, that have worked on this project, uh, especially mm-hmm. the director, uh, you know, just to understand the vision and how you were able to make this um, project into a reality. So mm-hmm. thank you again for coming on the podcast. Before I begin, I'd like to know, uh, how do you know Eric Tomjay? How did you guys get in touch with him? Oh, man. Um, well, I was trying to start my film, and I was like, oh, I need a producer. So I was talking to my friend Brandon Kenny, and he's a producer and a cinematographer. And he's like, I would love to do your film. I really want to, but I am jam-packed with time. So he was like, I have this guy, Eric, that I think would be great. And he sent it over, and... Eric said he loved jazz, so <laughs> he's like, there sure. And that's how I met him. And Espanier and Iman, have you guys met Eric before? Is this your first time? No, Our this was time. the first time. Yeah, yeah, first time. First time. Yeah. And uh, how was uh, your experiences working with Eric? Awesome, Good. to be honest with yeah. you. Yeah, great yeah. time. Uh, All right. I- I think he's just very, very welcoming and also just yeah. make sure everything is good at all times. So mm. I, I thought that was awesome for him. So for sure. And he makes the set really fun and, you know, he makes it like a safe space and everything. For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I can say like, speaking like as someone that I've worked with him or as a friend, he's a uh, very professional, like you guys uh, finished saying. Uh, but what I admire about him, because you don't come across it too much, especially the creatives. He's uh, very organized. Um, oh. He's very serious about his craft and very punctual so that's something that's very admirable so shout out to you eric um we'll get into the fire escape film right now um i'd like to know first from alana uh as the writer director of this film uh first off tell us about the story tell us about what this project is all about okay so fire escape is about a young jazz musician named miles who falls in love with a girl fleeing from abuse so I'm glad that I have both my loving actors here. Um, yeah, so that's where I kind of started with this idea. And I wanted to make it because I, I love jazz. I love jazz so much. And I was like, wow, I now have an opportunity to like make something exactly how I want to make it without, you know, thinking and keeping it in my head. Like I can actually finally put it out there. And So being able to take something like jazz that I absolutely love and mix it with a more serious topic with something that doesn't get talked about as much as actual abuse itself. Right. But I wanted to talk about the after effect, like how people get affected after and how that affects their lives. Yeah, that's very, yeah, that's very important. I'm glad you mentioned that about the aftermath of dealing with the effects of trauma. Um, You know, something on my podcast I discuss a lot is mental health. Um, mm. And it's not so much experiencing experiencing it in the moment. Um, a lot of things that I relate to with guests or uh, even myself is the aftermath, like how it affects your life um, if it's not controlled, right? If it's not uh, looked after. Um, so yeah, I've absolutely. always, yeah. So I really enjoy that you said your film kind of centers around those issues. Um, you know, we're all millennials here, right? We're all part of mm. that generation. And that is a hot topic. That is something that everybody is discussing. And that is something that should be explored. Um, So I'm really happy that you did that. You mentioned something about jazz. Uh, Are you a Damien Mm. Chazelle fan? Because when I think of jazz, I think of like La La Land and Whiplash. (laughs) (laughs) I'm obsessed with Damien Chazelle. I love him. I love the way he works. I love his movies. Like, I mean, Whiplash and La La Land are two of my favorite movies. Um, I mean, to name a few, I have so many favorite movies, but those are definitely <laughs> up there. Even the even and, the Pixar movie, I believe, Soul uh, was about jazz, right? Yeah. Yeah. That yeah, I, I love that one yeah. movie too. Yeah, that was, was that made one. me happy. <laughs> yeah, it was, <laughs> it was a cute, a cute one. one. Wasn't yeah, it? it was it was a feel good movie. Yeah, but La La Land for me, like when I watched just the side note, when I watched that in the theater, it was so immersive. 
Um, you know, I'm mesmerized by Los Angeles, the landscape and, you know, as a filmmaker, right. As artists, we, we, uh, I, I'm sure have one day, uh, dreams of getting there, um, you know, <laughs> growing our careers. So yeah, that's a side note. So amazing. Yeah. Damien Chazelle, um, so synonymous with, with the jazz genre. Um, mm. glad, you, glad you enjoy that as well. Uh, so after completing this story, because you're also the director on this project, um, you didn't just write it. Um, yeah. I wanted to know because I also write my stories, but I feel this compulsion, uh, this obligation really to direct them. Um, mm. I know writers, right? They'll write the script, they'll find a producer, and then they find a director for it. Why did you feel uh, compelled to direct this story and not find someone else to do it? Mm, I like that question. Um, I grew up being an actor and that was kind of like my thing. And then I started realizing that I was like, wow, wait a second. I had to have a few conversations with people being like, oh, wait, I really like this directing thing. Like this idea of like being able to you know, work on colors and work on locations and pretty much just take all these little pieces of films and make it into your own instead of just focusing on um, acting was very uh, interesting to me. It was, it was very exciting. And the idea yeah. of being able to do that was like uh, overwhelmingly exciting to me. So when I wrote it, I was instantly thinking, I don't want anybody else to take this. I want it to be absolutely mine and try out this whole directing thing and throw myself into the deep end and just see how it goes. And whatever happens there is... <laughs> it's right. gonna be what it is you know so you take you take you take the risk uh is this your first project by the way you directed yeah first oh amazing there you project. go project perfect mm -hmm. and uh she did a hell of a job yeah there you go <laughs> yeah right and and there's a first for everything like you have to kind of throw yourself in there i'm sure you were nervous as well right going into it or did you you got this kind of thing it was weird. Normally with a lot of things in my life, I deal with a lot of anxiety. So I was expecting okay. this to be fully anxiety inducing that I'm going to like regret all of this. And right. it was one of the most calmest ways of chaos ever. Yeah. It was the best kind of chaos. I was always busy trying to figure out all these little details, but instead of feeling overwhelmed, it was like, no, this is perfect. I love this. This doesn't even feel like work. Like this is great. And on the film set, I had like three hours of sleep every night, but I go. was waking up so excited, no stress, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, let's hear the things that we need to get through today yeah. and let's just crush it. And <laughs> I don't know, people woke up and they probably saw me already with like a Red Bull in my hand. Yeah. Just like yeah. Amped. <laughs> yeah. And you have to be as a director, right? You're like, I call it the helm of a ship, right? You're, you're leading everybody. And yeah. you have to, you have to have, bring that uh, utmost energy. And I relate exactly what you're saying. The reason why I asked if you were nervous is because I deal with anxiety as well. So for me, whenever I approach something, especially fear of the unknown, right? Um, you're bringing on people that you never may, maybe met before and you want to maybe ensure that your work is at its best. When you're on set, when you're actually doing the work, when you're in it, all that anxiety goes away. It's almost like, because you're so passionate about the project, you're so mm -hmm. focused that you don't have time to think about your anxiety, if that makes sense. No, so absolutely. it just, yeah. So it's completely focused. And I, and I relate to exactly what you said, and I'm happy you answered that way because it's mm -hmm. so relatable, you know, it's, um, it's so true as directors. Um, Cause what I've learned uh, in the few projects that I've directed is you have to be on your toes, like constantly, like people are asking you questions, like even the person asking, like, should we order pizza or should we get wings? Like for the, for the cast, like just like <laughs> random questions being asked all the time. You always have to, and, and people come to you because they see you as the leader of the project, really. Obviously there's other people that share that responsibility, but I really do feel like you're always quick to like have to be on the go, like always answering questions, always be prepared. And like you said, you, ha you can't be asleep. You can't be, um, that's why you said you had three hours of sleep. You can't be just kind of dismissing the role. You have to be always attentive. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So Absolutely. that's really cool. I want to know from now uh, our talent uh, before we move on. So I'll start with you, Iman. What uh, you're an actress in the film. You're the lead actress, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You share the screen with a Spaniard. Yeah. Um, so I want to know from you, what uh, was it about acting that made you pursue it? Ooh, okay. There's so many things I feel. I, I think I always just knew that I was a creative type, you know, as a kid. And um, I, I never 
fully had an outlet for my sensitivity. I think I was always a little bit sensitive, a lot as most artists are, yeah. you know. Yeah. And having grown up in the Middle East and United Arab Emirates, I didn't really have the resources for that. And so I would just do like little skits at home. Actually, I was I I loved singing. I was actually a really good <laughs> child singer. And then I kind of outgrew it. <laughs> but um, I did. I loved doing like the skits at home and stuff. And um, I didn't have like we didn't have as many drama classes as here in North America. But I tried to utilize it as much as I could. And then I kind of forgot about acting for a while, to be honest. And um, when I was a teenager, I had like an epiphany. I was on the phone with a friend and I was like, it was really random. I thought I was going to be a lawyer. You know, I was like, I'm going to be a lawyer. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And then I spoke to that friend and I just I was like, wow, you don't want to have to be an actor. And this was in high school. And obviously, it was some trial and error. It took like a few years, but until I moved to Canada and then I was like, I just packed my bags and I was like, you know what, this is it. I want to pursue this because as a kid, like I, I think because I kind of had an isolated upbringing, I connected so much through film and, you know, watching these people made me feel connected. It made me feel something. Mm. And just the idea that I could do that, that I could go on screen and make people feel the same way that I did, you know, make people feel alive because feeling is feeling alive, right? Just <laughs> brings me so much joy. And it's something that I genuinely want to dedicate the rest of my life pursuing because, um, yeah, you know, why not? If you love something, do it. And yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, that's a great story. And I, I didn't know, uh, I didn't know that, uh, you came to Canada uh, in pursuit of something else and you had all these different like kind of careers you were uh, <laughs> kind of juggling, like kind of uh, didn't know what to pursue. Um, yeah. Again, highly relatable for myself as well. Like, you know, when mm -hmm. I graduated from Ryerson, I studied marketing, right? And although it's creative, it's not as creative as filmmaking, in my opinion, and it's not storytelling, um, something I wanted to do since I was a little boy. So definitely uh, commend you on that for, mm -hmm. you know, following your heart. Um, it's not easy. Um, it's very challenging as well. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, you seem to be killing it. How do you Thank feel so far? Good. You know, I feel alive and that's what's important yeah. to me. You have that spark inside of you. Something brings you that joy. Do it. Do it. Keep doing it. Of course. And yeah. believe in yourself. Um, just be just be grateful that you're one of the few that actually gets to do that in this life, yeah. you know? And, that's, so, um, that's so smart yeah. to say, yeah. No, that's so true. Um, sometimes we don't realize, especially as artists, like when we're struggling to get something, you know, we're struggling to pitch a project or get it off the ground running. Uh, we could be down on ourselves. We can compare a lot. I don't know if you guys suffer with that. Oh, um, absolutely. Right. As artists, <laughs> like you see, oh, this guy, like, how is he able to, you know, acquire that budget? But you got to stop and like you said, and say to yourself, but let me be grateful for this moment right now. Like I'm actually having the thought that that yeah. kind of thought of, you know, not being able to make that film or not being like, some people can't even afford that. Some people are, you know, thinking about just day-to-day -day survival skills, you know, responsibilities. It's true. Or some people, you know, listen to their parents and what they want out of them. Oh, exactly. And, yeah, exactly. You yeah. know, so just be grateful that you're one of the few that just keeps it going and gets to do what they love. And sure, there's going to be difficulties that comes with everything, you know, and you're going to have doubts, but yeah. you push through the doubts and everyone's on their own journey and you trust your journey and you let your intuition guide you and everything will fall into place. You know, at the end of the day, like you're more alive because you get to do this. Mm. Yeah, you know? it's true. Yeah. And you feel good about yourself. It brings you happiness and, mm. you know, you, you feel like you're contributing a value as opposed to doing it for a paycheck. Right. And then going That's... home and then being forgotten about. <laughs> Literally, you know? Yeah. yeah. And I'm sure with you guys, all of you guys that um, my biggest thing, what I thrive on is having that creative outlet. So even if you are working full time, because, uh, you know, I'm working at a, I work at a company remotely. So uh, in Los Angeles, so I do a lot of creative work. But before that, I was not doing any creative work. I was just doing it on the sides, like on weekends. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is that when you integrate that in your life, when it's all encompassing, right? When it's mm -hmm. always uh, being practiced, that's what brings you the most joy, right? As an artist. For sure. For yeah. Sure. So as Fanyer, I want to know as well from you, you're an actor, you're the lead actor on this project, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. And I'd like to know from you, man, like what, uh, what was the inspiration to get into acting? What was the, or did you start off in acting? Uh, well, I, I mean, honestly, just because of my family being 
in acting and directing and whatnot, I guess it was just inevitable for me to jump into it as well and and try my hand at it. Um, Both, both my brothers are directors, whether here or back home in Iran. And, um, (laughs) you know, my mom used to be, yeah you have like a family <laughs> history in the in the industry that's amazing there you go news news to y'all <laughs> i wish i wish i had that uh, <laughs> yeah no they they um yeah they're, they're very passionate about film and my mom that's amazing used to be, my mom used to be an actress so i guess it's just it's in the the blood as they say i oh. i think i think i've always uh looked for a creative outlet in my life to be honest with you um and i I've loved music. I've loved being able to try to express yourself in some form of creative way, any type of creative arts, right? right? I think acting is the thing I gravitated towards the most just because of the fact that you can you can try to put yourself in someone's shoes and try to live a different life, maybe for five minutes, maybe for 10 minutes, maybe for a whole day, uh, and try to just understand where they're coming from, gain a new perspective, uh, and and maybe maybe at the end you'll try to figure out a little bit more about yourself i think that's the the goal i had at least coming into it you know obviously other things factor into it like being able to you know make a living and whatnot but i think the first reason i got into acting was because i wanted to be able to connect with other people and their experiences through trying to i guess portray it on screen yeah, for sure. You said it best. Uh, and I think that's why we're in this field. Um, whether you're the writer, the director, the editor, um, the actor, it's all storytelling, right? And you want to, you know, do the story justice, you want to tell the story as best as you can. Um, and ultimately, you want to inspire people, right? Like back to Alana, what she was explaining about, you know, abuse and, you know, that whole jazz element. Mm-hmm. Um, what it is, is that anyone that has suffered from abuse, anyone that's going through a post traumatic experience watching that film, uh, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I believe that intention, Alana, is to inspire them to walk away and make them think about, you know, project themselves in that character and say, you know, I relate to that character. This is what that character did. Maybe I can do this for myself in my life. That's at least how I view films. Um, I use it almost like the Bible, like something to, (laughs) as funny as that may sound, uh, something to kind of reference. Um, Obviously, I know it's fictional. Obviously, I know they're staged events. It's happening, curated nicely with music and sound effects and all that but it's the overall emotional core, right? That we can relate to as human beings um, mm-hmm. that really takes us to another level. So that's a lot of, that's really cool to hear from all, each and every one of you coming from different backgrounds, um, especially you as fan, you're like, had no idea that you had a huge family history in the film. <laughs> I know, I feel bad. I can't Bye. believe it. I hope the directing was no good, one. wow. No one hey, talks on set it. about their their personal. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just didn't think it was. I didn't think it was necessary. I didn't. No, think no, it was- no. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Keeping it. Keeping the business. He's preparing himself for when he makes it. You know, famous. <laughs> his, his private life. Keeping it private. Um, I love it. So, I want to know from Espanyol and Iman. Um, what? How did you get involved in the project? Was there an audition process? Did you know Alana? What was it? Uh, how did it go about? You go ahead. Uh, well, yeah, I actually, I believe I applied on, you know, one of the many, <laughs> uh, acting websites that we have that we use nice. here. Um, and you know, we, I did the self tape audition for, for one of the, I, I believe, and I think Alana will agree, like one of the heavier <laughs> scenes, uh, oh, wow. in the, in the, in the film. So, you know, it was just, it, it was, it was, it was a task to just do, but also it was something that I, I gravitated towards almost immediately. Uh, and that's, that's kind of how I got into it. Amazing. Any mind? Yeah. So actually, I knew Elle from before we met. Okay. At, um, yeah, we met through a mutual friend. And I kind of like nice. the first time I met her, I kind of just invited myself to her acting socials. You'd have these acting socials. I was like, nice. I'd only been here a year. And I was like, can I come and all this? And she was very welcoming about it. And so we had a couple acting socials and then the pandemic hit. And we caught up for dinner and I remember she mentioning that she's making a film and I was like, that's really cool. But she kind of mentioned in passing, like, you know, neither of us, like, I didn't think that much of it. Like, I was like really happy for her, but I didn't think I would be in it, you know? And so um, she mentioned, she was talking a lot about Miles, actually. And then um, she mentioned May and I was like, oh, maybe I'll audition. She's like, yeah, if you want to reach out um, to the production manager, who's the same mutual that introduced us. I was like, okay, that'd be cool. Um, but then, you know, like it was, again, it was very in passing. And then a week later, I just, I remember like I was craving an audition, you know? And so I, I, I emailed 
um, kill another same girl. And she sent me the script. And that's when I started to take it seriously. Cause I read the script and I fell in love. I was like, this nice. is so good. Like I like, and that's when I was like, I, I really want to do a good job. Like this is, you know, I loved May, um, mm-hmm. my character a lot. I empathize with her a lot. And so it just kind of felt very instinctive to me. I think when I auditioned. That's amazing to hear. And, you know, credit to the writer, you know, that that's something yeah. that every, every writer would want to hear I, oh, I know yeah. from experience. You don't, <laughs> you don't want to send a script and then it come back. Like, I don't get the story, <laughs> but uh, that's amazing. Alana. And honestly, like I even I'm picking up now. So the main characters are called miles and may. Yeah. Yeah. Really nice, really nice names. Yeah. Good choices. Um, so let's get back to the film with fire escape. Um, I was told from Eric that you were shooting in Cambridge and Mm -hmm. I'd like to know what was the experience like shooting uh, on location and working in the city of Cambridge because I've never been there myself. (laughs) Oh okay well uh, when I was writing this I was living in Toronto and but I'd always I, I grew up in the same home my entire life in Cambridge and I really wanted to make this film based in the city that I grew up in and using local businesses and using all these places that were very close to me because I always wanted to think if I was going to look back into my career and look back at what I'd made, I'd want to start in the base of where my life was kind of built, where I fell in love with film and everything. And I was lucky enough to use these locations, uh, 13, which is a uh, bar and restaurant. That's where the fire escape is located. Nice. Um, I was able to use a music studio where I first fell in love, you know, which was super crazy. I got to use the coffee shop that I used to work at and it's, and I got to use my friend's apartment that I'd go to all the time, saying crazy stories of what's happened right. in my life. And it was so crazy because it, it was all in the same parking lot. First of all, mm. everything is like a circle. All these locations are in one parking lot. That's amazing. And, and to be able to talk to these local businesses and these people and be able to say like, Hey, I'm making this and I want it to be based in Cambridge and show people how beautiful the city is and get more attention. It was like, yes, let's do it. I'm so in. I'm down for your idea, let's make it happen. And so being able to show the Grand River with the beautiful bridges and um, be able to show the beautiful parks that we have here and everything was just so special. It just, it it felt so magical. And if you go to Cambridge, you really will see that it feels very Mm -hmm. magical almost. Yeah, uh, the way you're describing it, to be honest, uh, the impression I got um, was it was just another like location that fit the story. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't know how personal it was, uh, which makes me even more excited to watch this film and anyone that's listening because the, the personal stories are the best stories. Um, the ones mm-hmm. that, you know, ring, uh, kind of hit home. Um, you know, if I were to make a short film, uh, I have some ideas uh, myself, like centered around how I grew up in my childhood, definitely would return back to my, uh, my, my home uh, where it all <laughs> happened. Um, it's just completely nostalgic and that authenticity, right? Uh, just mm-hmm. knowing that you were yourself, like you said, in that music studio, for instance, there in the flesh. Um, so when you watch the film or when you're directing them, it's like, wow, it's surreal, right? And I wanted to know, actually, yeah, uh, yeah there's another point I wanted to add. When you're, as a writer, I do this a lot. Do you kind of project yourself um, in the role, like let's say in the main character or with, for this film, it wasn't the case? Because I'm imagining the way you're describing this location. And for me, when I write, I'm always, there's always a touch of like a little hint of like my <laughs> character or, or like who I am in that story. Is that something you do, Alana? I would say that May doesn't actually have that many similarities to me. I think okay. her uh, sassiness, maybe a little bit. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think a few things like that, there's some connections and um the wit I love that um I found myself uh being more attached to Miles as a person in general um and 
I didn't actually realize it. I didn't put it together. I wasn't thinking, I'm like, oh, I am Miles in this situation. But the more I looked at it, the more it was almost like a self-discovery. Like I saw myself right. in both these people and I was like, it's like, these characters are so different from each other. So it was like an alter ego of my mind. Yeah. But I never pictured myself in, for a very long time ever playing um, May. I always was like, nope this isn't for me. This isn't like, I know yeah. that there's somebody else that is going to take this character and it's going to be theirs. And I'm so happy it was Simone. Like yeah. she just got it. She totally understood it. And she was like, nope. Like it was easy when we went over <laughs> the script go. and I was like, okay, so these, these are the characters. And she's like, I got it. Great. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Those, that's the best. And that's something that I wanted to bring up next. Like, you know, ensuring the authenticity, right? Uh, protecting that. Um, you know, Iman didn't come in there and like butcher it. <laughs> she she came in with a purpose. She came in knowing like your vision, your intent for the character. And she worked with you. I think that's what any dream team would be about, right? You know, just collaborating together and not saying, no, I interpret it like this. Um, I want to know from Iman, what was it like working with Alana, um, you know, on set and, have do you feel her direction made you a bit a better um actor absolutely actress, i should say <laughs> it's okay actress fine <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> absolutely um i was great she was she was really patient and compassionate throughout which i think are extremely important for a director she knows how to get what she wants out of you without being pushy you know and she makes right. it like a really safe comfortable space and she empathizes with the actor and she made it fun like that's at the end of the day like you need it you're working long hours you know even if it's a if it's a short film it's still it's long hours you oh, need yeah. it to be fun she brought despite having slept like three hours and then having a red bull every day she always had a really positive attitude about it and she was there for her actors you know she brings that to the table and then I think the fact that she wrote the script, let alone she told me in like a few hours is like evidence in its own how creative she is, you know, and like the talent that lives inside of her. And so I feel like this whole project did make me a better actor, for sure. I think the directing uh, made me understand myself better. Nice. And I do feel like because I, res like I resonated with May so much and, you know, it had to bring things out of myself it challenged me as an actor. It had to bring emotions in me that I didn't realize, you know, had to come to surface. It did, it challenged me and it, it made me a better one because of that. Because as actors, we want challenges, right? We want to feel like, you know, we need to do something that we didn't realize we could do or feel something we didn't realize we could feel. And you find yourself a little bit through it. And so, yeah, thank you, Elle. <laughs> yeah, for sure. No, that's, wow. that's important. Uh, I, yeah. I've never done acting myself I don't think I'll ever pursue it uh, even though sometimes I've been told to pursue acting maybe check, check it up myself but uh yeah I have to say I, I'm sure as an actress uh, or an actor whatever have you you'll uh, want that range right you don't want to be kind of typecast um in a role or you don't you want to be challenged like you said as uh, mm -hmm. with whoever you're working with you know to push push the boundaries push the limits maybe tap into something that uh is undiscovered in yourself you know what I mean um obviously I don't know your past Iman but you know, if you ever, if you suffered from abuse, or if you know someone with abuse, uh, you can kind of tap into those emotions, right, and convey a really authentic uh, performance. So I think that's really special. And that's, uh, that's so um, comforting to know that you're in the hands of a great director that can ensure that. Absolutely. So uh, as Fanyar, I want to know, um, with yourself, you know, your experiences working with Alana, uh, if there were any challenges uh, portraying the character, uh, how you approach the role? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think back to Elena's point of, you know, Cambridge, Ontario. And I promise you when you when you get there, it looks like you're not in Ontario. It's, <laughs> it has a very, very European yes. vibe to it. Oh, did I, did, I, did I cut out for a second? I'm sorry. I oh, no, you're good. Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. for a second, uh, but you're good now. Uh, yeah, it, it gives it gives a European vibe to it, and and just from you know Alana's stories, 
and her sharing them, you know, as we go throughout shooting this movie, um, I think it helped me connect so much more to each moment that we were doing. So, you know, we're in the studio, we're sitting on the on the piano and, and she's here telling me about her experiences with this very piano. It, it gives you so much more to work with. And I think that's what Alana was so great at. She gave you so much to work with. And, and I think that was the thing that really set it apart for me. Um, I love the, you know, when you think of a, a short film, it, it's a bit of a family atmosphere, right? When you're shooting right. everybody, everybody kind of, you know, bounces yeah. things off each other. It's of course. The, the ideas are kind of flowing. Um, I love that aspect. And working with Atlanta, working with the rest of the crew, it, it, I, I got that feeling that you're, you're, you're on this journey together to figure out how this, how this thing gets made. Um, and that, I think that was the best part to be honest with you. Yeah. I'm, I'm so happy you said that actually. <laughs> a lot of uh, you've yeah, never seen that yeah, before. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's an inside thing. <laughs> um, when I was, we, when we were on set, I tried might to as describe, well yeah. Yeah. yeah, I, I don't know if, uh, since this For is the YouTube podcast, we're doing, For yeah, we're version. doing a weird hand rubbing motion with both of our hands and it looks very okay. strange, but um the reason I just started doing that because I wanted to explain things to them and be like it feels like this like I want this right. and there was so much I was feeling that I was just like yeah. it's like this yeah. and they like understood it it's so good <laughs> it's so good it feels so good try it like like there's yeah, something do I this. Know it's like the Rub points on your to this there's, day I tell it does actually feel good it kind of calm relaxes it's you so yeah. nice yeah. So it just uh, became a joke. I was like, okay, guys, ready? It's this. It's this. Mm. Yeah. I'm just happy that everybody clicks. Like, everybody understands <laughs> it. Like, you, there's no not, kidding. Like, I, was, I thought maybe a Spaniard would be that, that only one, just like, I have no idea what's happening. Like, no, no. <laughs> we, everyone's we clicking. Are, yeah. 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 When I talk to Eric, I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be doing this. I'm just going to be doing this. Uh, he better know what's up. <laughs> it's pretty much like the Spock thing. It's just yeah. like, yes, you understand this motion. Now let's switch You're part of ET going. productions. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's great. That's great to hear. And it's fan. I really like what you said, actually, um, about Alana. You're, you're explaining that in between takes um, or when there's downtime, she was like discussing her personal experiences uh, about the set, um, you know, yep. the story. And those are the best directors, you know, talking with their actors, not just saying, okay, do this action. And then they walk away and then they mm -hmm. return when there's another take. You have to talk to them. You have to sit with them. You have to ask them if they're okay, how they're feeling. Are you comfortable? Uh, you know, a big thing I do with my actors is I let them interpret the role, like uh, interpret the scene, I should say, or the take. So I want to see how they portray the role. Uh, I want to see like what their opinions are like, cause they might, inspire me for something different that I didn't see in the character whether it's a something an inflection on their face or whether they how they announce enunciate a word um all those little details matter and the directors that you know are narrow focused they only want to like execute their vision and then go home and that's it won't get the best performance won't get the best product overall right um so I think that's so important um and that's a testament again to, uh, Alana to your directorial debut uh, with fire escape. So I want to know now, uh, shifting back to, I guess not so much the film, but, you know, cinema as a landscape, um, this is a question I've been dying to ask you, um, when I heard that you were coming on my podcast, Alana. So as the landscape of cinema continues to change and the film industry diversifies its roles for women, what has your experience been like so far as a female director? I love this question. Um, I was honestly slightly worried that I would get into this and tell people I was doing this and get some weird looks and hear like, oh, you're directing. Um, and I wanted people to understand that I didn't want to be pushed around. I didn't want people to think I was less of for being a woman making a, a big uh, short film. But as I started and went through this process, I realized I picked a team who didn't question that. Mm -hmm. They weren't trying to one-up me or question my abilities at all. And I felt like I had made a set that was very mixed with um, males and females. And it felt 
equal and it didn't feel like someone <laughs> was um someone was more of or less of it didn't feel like I had to prove myself I felt mm. very comfortable and it felt normal which I think it should feel normal I don't think it should even be like a question of like oh my gosh a female director I think it should just be like oh yeah of course you are of course you are um I think that's with everything everything yeah. that you do I think it's like wow uh, I don't ever want it in the future for anybody's job to be like oh my gosh I can't believe you are a female doing this job it just should just be like yeah great get the job done <laughs> because that's yeah, what no, it is no and, that, and that's and that's how it should be really um and mm -hmm. that's how really I see it like when when you see a film or when you're on set like you said it you don't really say oh she's a female director like you don't you don't think of it like that the reason I asked that question is because like I was discussing before the podcast is from my experience, yeah, I've, I've met female directors. I've been in classes with them, workshops. Um, I've even collaborated with them. I've helped them make some projects. But again, it's not as frequent as a male director. And that's just, again, yeah. maybe my perception. So when I saw that, I, what I do is I assess the film. I go, I look into it. I learn more about it. talk to Eric about it. And then, then I set myself down and I say, because again, I'm a writer-director. And I say to myself, wow, she's a writer-director. It doesn't change the fact that you're a woman. But it's interesting to know, like, that, that's amazing. You know what I mean? That you're, you're coming into this industry, like you said, where you're worried that someone's going to think of you less than. And I believe it's courageous yeah. in a way where you didn't think of that. And anyone that had objections, you're happy to say, I'll find someone else. You know what I mean? Like, you don't, you're not going to conform to those. Um, Absolutely. Right? Those ideologies. Yeah. So I think it's so important that you said that. And it goes back to staying true to the vision, right? Staying true to the project. Um, again, Eric Tomji, you know, coming on board, didn't, definitely, I know him, did not see you as a female uh, director. He saw you mm -hmm. as an artist and he saw you as someone that wants to execute a vision because I know his work ethic and that's what makes him great. And I say, and I bring him up because again, he's a producer and producers, we know in Hollywood, we hear stories all the time where they could, you know, get a project, they can manipulate it, manipulate yourself uh, into thinking, you know, it's not good or maybe do something different maybe even get to the point of getting on a different director entirely, right? Maybe just keeping you mm -hmm. as a writing credit. But the fact that he wanted to see the vision all the way through with you, um, that's, that's a huge testament uh, to the project and to the team behind it. So that's really cool to hear. I want to know also mm -hmm. from you, Alana, is your intention as a filmmaker to challenge the notions of sexism and prejudice through storytelling and empower young girls? Or, is, oh, or, yeah. you just happen, or do you just happen to be a female director? <laughs> Oh man. Yeah. I, I remember saying to, uh, having conversations before I made this film, I was like, my biggest goals, I think are to make sure that I don't whitewash a film. I wasn't, I had no idea who I was casting. Um, I had no idea. I had an open mind for all of that. I just wanted the right people to do the right job and be the right people. I wanted to also inspire a lot of younger voices and be able to inspire younger generations. And I think it was so lovely to have a set that was um, very mixed races, mixed um, stories, just a bunch of people like male and female. I feel like it was comfortable for everybody. I wanted that to not again, not even have to be a question, not have to be something that um, is a concern or someone felt uncomfortable. I wanted it to feel, like I said before, normalized, completely and utterly normalized. Um, so yeah, that was something I was definitely thinking about. I wanted to make sure that, okay, great. We have a female director, female writer. We've got a great mix of cast and crew. We have um, this opportunity to show people that, yeah, this is just how it should be. This is this is the new normal. Let's make this yeah. the new new normal. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, and I want to know now from uh, the talent. Uh, so I'll start with you, Iman. Uh, what lessons or values uh, did you learn from portraying the character of May and from helping to tell the story? Ooh. So with May, I actually learned not what to do <laughs> because I saw this. I firstly I empathize with her a lot, like a lot, a lot. And I think instantly that's the reason that 
I could portray her so easily was because I felt a lot for her. And having coming from a place of fear, it's hard to break your walls. You know, when you see love, but you come from a place of abuse, it's not easy to let your guard down again. You know, you want to protect yourself, even though she's like, she is in love with Miles, but um, it's just, it's too risky for her. And so having, I was, funnily enough, I was kind of in a similar situation during that period of my life. And I think being able to portray her and feeling that pain even more and seeing, you know, that sometimes it's okay to let love in, you know, right. because at the end she ends up hurting herself and Miles more than, uh, yeah, more than she has to. But um, I don't know. It's just, I, I did, I learned not what to do because love is great. And sure, not opening up to it is easier, and I know it didn't come from a place of malice for her, whatever mm-hmm. was, you know, whatever feelings she had throughout the film. But um, you got to open your heart. And so I learned to open my heart. Actually, I learned the opposite. Um, yeah. yeah, through her, which was great. And it was just very fitting during that time. So it's almost like this role found me. No, it's, and, it's a, yeah. such a powerful lesson that you've learned because, um you said it, um, I, and I'll go back to, again, especially our generation, I feel um, we can be very jaded, um, just the information right. that we receive and, you know, how we're supposed to be, how we're supposed to act, um, especially when it comes to love. And yeah. like you said, it's, uh, you should open yourself up because if you don't open yourself up, you never know, right? And you got to give it a shot because not everyone is that person that's going to hurt you or whatever have you, right? Um, so I think it's so important that those messages are being delivered, like, delivered in this uh this film because they're they're relevant uh, a lot of people whether they voice it or not are going through it there's a lot of people that whether it's a day whether they're going out with someone they don't they conceal themselves they don't want to show who they really are right mm-hmm. they don't want to mm-hmm. be open and vulnerable absolutely and vulnerability is scary but it is so beautiful and like may is in that she's in that you know, she's, she's like, ugh, and she's struggling. And I feel that because this is fitting for every age. Like I know people like this and this is why I feel like the demographic for this film is going to be so many ages because the point of it is it, I feel like people will be able to understand from be it a teenager or in their sixties, you know, it's just yep. like, let love in, like, yeah, let love in. <laughs> or the best, yeah. Or the best films I should say, because you were saying that how the demographics, uh, an array of ages. Mm-hmm. um are the ones where it's like maybe they're watching and they're like oh i'm not in my 20s you know what i mean like maybe they're a teenager like you said mm-hmm. um but it's something that they can like look forward to or kind of like be reminded of like a coming of age oh, story yeah. you know what i mean um oh, yeah. so that's really cool and yeah vulnerability yeah is, is, is the fastest way to to really see and judge like if the person is genuine right because if someone's going to be judging you and you're showing your vulnerable side you're showing who you really are right mm-hmm. that they have the problem not yourself so Anyone listening to that, I hope that helps you. <laughs> yeah. um, and so as Fanyar, um, I want to know from you, because uh, you mentioned your rich family history of being in the film industry. <laughs> 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 but I do really want to know, man, uh, from yourself, uh, you're an actor, but do you see yourself becoming a director, someone like Alana being in that position as a writer as well? Yeah, um, to be honest with you, I've already thought of, potentially getting into writing i've i've dabbled in the idea of potentially doing that i always say potentially with it because (laughs) it's it's a leap of like to to be quite frank and like to kind of build on what you guys have been saying it's a leap of faith to to trust in yourself to be able to tell a story convincingly to evoke emotion all of those things are it's a leap of faith in yourself to to like you know lay those emotions out there and be vulnerable um but yeah I, absolutely absolutely i think i think it's just a part of being a multifaceted person in this industry is you want to be able to try everything and you want to be able to kind of have your hands on whatever essentially you can get so yeah absolutely absolutely there would that's be- amazing yeah and i look forward to uh your work if you ever decide to pursue it because um i think it's so cool that uh you know one thing that not so much regret because i really didn't have an interest um in acting i like being behind the camera i, I like that creative control Mm -hmm. but um you'll definitely have a different perspective um you'll be much more experienced and more prepared going in going in uh 
because you'll you'll know how the set is run, you'll know how everything functions, uh, and you'll know what you're looking for. Alana, I'm sure you can relate to that, right? As an actress, mm -hmm. former mm -hmm. actress, right? Yeah. Yeah. That helps a lot. Um, yeah, it's the best acting school. I think I remember Jonah Hill saying something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I think I think of it like sports in a lot of ways, like, you know, you, you can't learn the entire sport without, you know, trying to play every position and figure out what suits you and what works best. So, yeah. And I want to mention love it. That. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to mention as well, like the thing, <laughs> the thing about like the arts is you only understand you only because like for a lot of people, did you guys all go to film school, by the way? Any of you go to film school? No. See? Yeah. So that's my point is that I didn't go to film school either. Right. And the only way to become um, involved in the industry is to get involved. Right. So throw yourself in there. Absolutely. Right. Sure. There you Couldn't go. be a bigger believer in that. <laughs> yeah. I really know because there's so many, like, don't get me wrong. Uh, I'm sure in the past and, I, and it's a constantly a learning experience. Like you've told after every project you're, you're, you're told, Oh, maybe you should do this more like, uh, there was a time when I didn't even have like a shot list, right? So the next project, I had myself a shot list or there was a time I didn't have a storyboard. But this is like years of like, you constantly like create projects, projects and they grow and grow. And you just constantly be learning like what to look for. Um, like the audition process before it used to be, <laughs> hey, you, you, you want to be in a project? Yeah, now it's okay. Let's find the person that fits the role, right? Let's mm -hmm. go on Mandy. Let's go on the resources we have. But what I'm saying is that there's always going to be room for improvement. And I think a lot of people fear entering the business. I know I did for the longest time when I was much younger because I said to myself, these guys are going to know I'm an amateur. But that's the thing, isn't it? Is that we're all amateurs. We're all trying to tell the best story possible. Yeah. You know what I mean? No one's, no one's perfect here. I would love to add on to that. I think I was all, always terrified. I mean, everyone can be when you start off and you're like, well, what, what do I, how can I help? Like, I have no idea what I'm doing. But my favorite quote that I've grown up that has shaped me to who I am today is a quote that is, do what scares you and your confidence will follow. Like, just go. Nice. Go do what like scares yeah, you. I'm going to get, get a tattoo of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm this close, man. Right. <laughs> do what scares you. And that confidence comes right after. You learn so much from just going out there and doing. Like just any experience I've had, in, especially in film, in the film world of working on sets and trying to get jobs, you fake it till you make it. That is true. They say, oh, can you yeah. do this? And you go, um, yeah. The next day you are Googling, you are searching, you are trying your best on that set to figure out what you're doing, but you learn because you've it's pushed amazing. yourself to learn that. Yeah, it's, it's, no, it's, it's true. Always, always, always throw yourself in the mix. Always uh, take the risk because the worst that could happen is you start back to where you before right but you're more prepared you're more experienced so why not take that risk um can i can i add something to that yeah for now, sure man. Now, yeah, go now i'm feeling all the all the yeah all the I, I got something to say too but i'll wait for everyone to speak yeah, yeah. i think it's this yeah i'm gonna start yeah. doing this all day i'm gonna start doing this all day yes. should we trademark it are we are we uh I know. Honestly, some royalties on that or what? You, you might have to look into that you gotta you yeah. gotta look at that or something i don't know good t-shirts uh, yeah all, all i was just gonna add to that is i think uh that's what's so fulfilling about this industry is that you can never stop learning and there's always oh. new challenges there's always new things that are ahead of you always new things that you can kind of conquer so to speak um you know with a lot of industries and i speak from past experience working in them it can get routine it can get repetitive with with acting with directing with being in this industry you are constantly challenged to try mm. to do something else and try to learn more. Um, and I think that's what, mm. that's what gravitates. Like that's what gets all of us into it. I think in a lot of ways. It does, yeah, yeah, for sure. And like, you get to do everything, right? So as Elle was saying, like you have to say yes to everything, but as actors, that's our jobs. You know, mm. we, we do everything and directors and like, you know, it's doing everything, feeling everything. So yeah, it's fun. It's exciting. It's, it's, alive <laughs> well i say this on the podcast a lot uh if you guys follow it anyone that follows it listening uh tarantino quentin tarantino he is my hero uh he's the one that made me want to become a filmmaker uh that aspect that he's a writer director that aspect that he has complete creative control and everything you see on screen is his uh blood sweat and tears but the biggest factor why he's my inspiration and i've told eric tom jay this and a lot of my colleagues and friends is the famous line he says, I didn't go to film school, I went to films. 
And what we were all discussing is, yeah, yeah, it's my favorite quote. That might be a potential tattoo. Don't know. <laughs> but uh, I'm serious, guys. That quote uh, rings so true. And it reminds me every day, anytime like I have a fear, anytime that I have anxiety, anytime that I'm intimidated to go on a set or to work with people that might be more experienced or even people that are on my level, but I just fearful of the project turning out. I tell myself that and I say, this guy made an empire for himself. He made a dream come true because he loved movies so much. And now he's working with like hundred million dollar budgets. And I, and I, like he said it in an interview on YouTube and it chokes me up all the time. Like he goes, you know, I don't know lenses. I don't know, you know, gels. I don't know like uh, choreography. I don't know all, all that's all the little, the sound guys. I don't know what, what they do. I just know my vision. I know my references. I bring, I come prepared. I show them what I want and we get to the best possible solution. And that's, that's it. Amazing. You know that's what I mean? Amazing. And it's like, that's, that's how I've been kind of modeling my career this whole time <laughs> is I show up prepared with like a binder of all my notes, my reference shots from movies or video games or, you know, palettes, Aww. everything like that. <laughs> and I'll tell them, I'll say like, this is what I want. Some guy will say, oh, did you want this lens? Whatever. I'm like, hey, this is an example of the, the shot I want. Obviously, as I get into it, I, need, I should know more and more, yeah. but that'll come with time. But <laughs> for anyone in, intimidated or fearful, like they don't know the knowledge, go in there and just make it your best. Buy yourself a camera. Don't even hire a director of photography. I don't know about you, Alana, but I film. <laughs> I actually man the camera myself. I film. Wow. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh. wow. If you guys see on my Instagram, uh, we'll follow each other after the podcast. Um, I did a film last year uh, called Cracked. It's about a 20 minute short film about mental health, uh, mm. a young man suffering. And I basically took over the cinematography role because we couldn't find one. And I have myself an A7 III camera, the gimbal. Wow. And I just shoot oh. all my content. Yeah. So I'm just saying is if you want to make it work, you'll make it yeah. work. Go for it. Wow. And can I add yeah. to that just real quick? I do yes. want to say that um, if you like, like you said, basically what you bring is bring instinct, right? Bring instinct, bring passion. Those can be so much more important than an education or, you know, waiting for it to happen. You just go, you do it. And so, yeah, people who are pursuing this industry, don't think about it. Just if you love it, let that passion drive you to do it. Absolutely. You don't need an education. Yeah. Got to jump. Yeah, yeah for sure. Jump. Like, Iman, I just want to say, like, you know, being an act, uh, you being an actress, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure, like, you've gone to classes, you've gone to school, and you can go to those places to kind of better your performance and look for kind of weaknesses or just how to tweak certain things but you have to be an observer of life you have to be an observer of characters in mm -hmm. order to excel at that profession you know what I mean like you have to just take it take it uh make it your own as my mom would always tell me you got to make it your own um you can someone can only teach you so much but you have to mm -hmm. like kind of absorb it and make it uh make it shine for sure so, I like your mom <laughs> but yeah no my mom my mom your, your oh, mom's my a mom's, smart lady no, my mom's a kick-ass guy. It's no joke. Like she, the way she talks to me. You guys know Gary Vee? Yeah. You guys yeah. familiar with Gary Vee? You know how he talks? Like, he's very, like, cutthroat. Like, yeah. there's one... There's one ep okay, I'll tell you guys a story. So, <laughs> there's one... <laughs> there's a video at the beginning of 2021 that I remember seeing. It was literally, like, January 1st. And he, he posts these videos to inspire people and motivate people. And he goes... So, he does the video with the caption at the top. And it goes, Gary Vee, how are you so motivated? And then he looks at the camera. He's like, by realizing, by realizing I got no fucking choice. He's like, this is it. This is all I have. You got fucking one life. And the reason why, and the reason why, like I laugh, but I don't laugh too hard because it's so true is because my mom, <laughs> full disclosure, my mom talks to me like that. She's like, you want this dream? She's like, you want to become a filmmaker? You're very smart up and focused and stop being distracted yes. by this shit. Yes. Yeah. Like she's a kick ass, but she, you know what? Right. The, be the best kind because you need that and she humbles me and she yeah. grounds me as you should right have Definitely. that um because i think we're all uh, aware of this there's a lot of artists and creatives we love them but some people their egos can get a little bit carried away and yep. you need to you need to humble yourself because even if you are a tarantino you still need to have that self-awareness of am i getting too carried away with this you have to listen to people you have to listen to the people around you because they're looking out for your best interest, the ones that you keep you around. So, I mean, the ones that you keep around. Yeah. So I think it's so important to have that attitude and that mindset. And um, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely inspirational people all around me, <laughs> including my Good. mother. So Good. Yeah. yeah. So um, really happy to have this conversation, guys. Um, really a lot of fun uh, getting to know your creative journeys and uh, learning more about this project, uh, Fire Escape. Really excited to see it. 
when is it releasing? Is it is there a, a date coming up? There isn't a specific date. Um, okay. Hopefully by around February, you know, March. Oh, okay, like 2022. I thought it was like a fall yeah. Oscar season. Yeah. No, it's not an Oscar oh. season. No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Straight right, to the right. Oscars. Yeah, going right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. You got to release it in October, November. That's when uh, they compete. <laughs> December 25th. Exactly. That's how. The, that's the the real contenders. Um, <laughs> there. No, there we go. Uh, December 25th is actually the new date then. Um, perfect. Perfect. I'll tell Eric Tom J. I'll, I'll text him right now. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, Start getting right. your marketing materials going. <laughs> uh, but um, no, seriously, a lot of uh, great conversation, guys. Very really insightful. Um, you guys uh, inspired me uh, as creatives, like just taking a lot of uh, what you guys said about how you guys work together, um, what you've learned on the project. And I'm excited to see this this uh, this project. I'm excited to see what the story is all about. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank yeah. you for having us. Uh, I've had such a good conversation. Great. It gets me amped. I get those little chills everywhere. Yeah, just, I saw yes, you. I saw you. Yeah. Mixed I up. It. <laughs> it, was, uh, yeah. it was good to see your beautiful faces again. Daniel, appreciate oh. you as always. Yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, man. Very, very insightful conversation. Love talking yeah. about this stuff in general. So this was this was. Yeah. Really- Oh, it does. Yeah. It like brings up that spark again, you know, it's creative. Yeah. And, and I love like creatives being in a room or like a virtual room. Cause you know, these days, but together, because it's just, it, it brings yeah. that energy and you need that energy. So. Yeah. I'm ready. I'm ready to start my day. So <laughs> that's Yay. all I know. But yeah, uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah we'll uh, definitely, you're welcome to come back on the podcast. Happy to have more discussions, uh, more films you guys are working on, or, you know, just keeping up to date with your creative journeys. Uh, we'll be in touch about that um let's but having rank said our, that, let's rank sorry, our tarantino ahead. movies rank our tarantino rank them oh, <laughs> another right. day another day another, <laughs> another day, another day. Yeah. we're like what for me for I, I, I don't know if this isn't in order but i'll give you like the top three that i always go to okay uh it's pulp fiction django mm-hmm. Unchained, and uh inglorious bastards Nice. Ooh, nice. Ooh, nice. Ooh. Yeah. I have a I have a sleeper pick in there that I just I absolutely love. I love Jackie Brown. Jackie okay. Brown. I knew you were gonna crazy. say that. Yeah. It Jackie is Brown definitely. is such a good movie. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. a firm they say watch it like it's a more mature Tarantino. Like you watch it and it's not flashy or stylistic. It's just very raw. And it is. It's very raw. Yeah. The whole point is to show you like these people middle aged, older in their in their later years, you know how they function, how they're trying to <laughs> make, right. make sense of their own lives, you know? Yeah. Um, because yeah, like you said, like you, or you watch his other films and it's just in your face, stylistic, the music. That's why Django mm-hmm. Unchained, the Django Unchained, I should say, was the one that solidified uh, my fandom for Tarantino because when I, I'm so used to watching all these studio movies, right? How they're orchestrated, how they're put together. And you watch, you sit down, you watch the movie and you just immediately pulled in with the music mm-hmm. and the the credits and everything was just so different about it. Um, again, there's very sensitive subject matter about it, but um, I, uh, yeah, I just thinking about that theater experience. It always brings me back. Absolutely. He knows, yeah. he knows how to make, uh, he knows how to make every movie that he he's a part of or directs an experience. It's an experience. when He's yeah. so yeah. good. Yeah. He's so good. Even in heard- a, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Go. I, I was yeah. going to say it's all right. My, <laughs> it, it's an event. It's an event. <laughs> like an event yeah absolutely yeah he's really good he is amazing and i really like kill bill oh i mean like would, would yeah. you say that because it's seen this empowering woman absolutely. you know like as the as she was so powerful i watched that as a kid and i was like wow yeah. like, it's nice to see a woman have such a being power a badass role. being a badass exactly i love kill bill it was amazing yeah totally I mean, agree because we're on this subject i just want to mention like true romance see he didn't direct it he wrote it Ooh. because he was trying to make the money to get funded for reservoir dogs uh but credit to tony scott uh who came on as a director and this is what i mean by like ensuring the authenticity like retaining it yeah because it looked as it like if you watch it obviously it's not tarantino directing it but you feel like it is his movie because mm-hmm. he didn't touch anything in the script he only changed the ending because he wanted a more hopeful ending um but that was it and then everything like the style the music and everything like that like it it was as close to um his original vision uh as best it could be 
as opposed to natural born killers where Oliver Stone apparent famously butch- <laughs> chopped it all up. Yeah. And Tarantino <laughs> walked it. He was on a yeah. date. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know the story. He was on a date watching this movie because he was curious about like how it turned out. And he walked <laughs> out after five minutes and he left his date in the auditorium apparently. That's how pissed off he was. That's and so... I'm like, that's Tarantino for you. Like the, yeah. the dream is more important <laughs> than the, 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 the art. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh um, my gosh. Amazing. Wow. He's a character. He's a character for sure. Yeah. But um, nevertheless, thank you guys again. Uh, I'm looking forward to get, having thank you guys you. back. Looking forward to seeing Fire Escape. Appreciate it. Uh, it's been a pleasure. All right. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. No thank worries. you so much. Talk soon. Take care. Take care. Bye, guys. <laughs>